Welcome back to Hot Rod High School. In today's episode, we are going to be using this Hunter Hawkeye alignment machine to go through and get alignment readings on one of these vehicles. These machines are absolutely phenomenal. Uh, to the point of I can get the alignment readings going full out from driving the car into the bay to having the readings up on the screen under two minutes. Um, really phenomenal what this thing does. They basically decided that most people just didn't have the brain power to do an alignment. And so they put the brain into the machine and all you have to do is follow the directions. Very, very user friendly tool here. That being said, it's almost too user friendly because people rely on it too heavily. Hunter's number one complaint about this machine is the fact that people do an alignment, give the car back to the customer and the customer goes, hey, my steering wheel is off to the left or it's off to the right or the car pulls even worse to the left than it did before we, uh, we got the alignment. What's going on here? And it's because they didn't do their due diligence in a pre-alignment inspection. You have to check the tire pressure prior to doing an alignment. If the tire pressure isn't correct, you can't do the alignment. Same thing is if you have very badly worn tires, you need to replace those tires prior to your alignment. If you have a loose ball joint or if you have a loose bushing, you can do the alignment, you can get the alignment readings to be perfect on the readout, and by the time you drive the car off your bay, by the time it hits the pavement, all that alignment readings, is, they're all gonna be off again, and the car is still going to react and behave poorly. So doing all that stuff, shaking down the suspension, making sure that there's no problems with the uh, vehicle first, this is the last step. It's not the first step. Another thing that we find too is that customers sometimes make the mistake of just coming in saying, hey, my car needs an alignment. There's some shops out there who will be like, sure. And they will follow the customer's orders and do an alignment. And then they'll come back and say, well, my car is, is acting just the same as it did before. It's like, yeah, well, it needs to be repaired. The alignment's the last step. So let's go ahead and get started with this machine. So we'll come down here, hit begin alignment and it's gonna ask you for some of this information. Uh, a lot of the cars, you can't actually take this little scanner here, scan the VIN number of the vehicle, put in the rest of the information. It'll actually auto-populate a lot of the, the rest of the information for you. Um, so for the year, this one, I've already checked it, but it's a 2013 uh, technician, me. So now we'll choose what kind of car we're working with. This one is a Hyundai, hit OK. It is an Accent, we'll hit OK. Uh, it's a 2013, so we'll go for the specs for a 2012 through 14, hit OK. And now it's gonna come up with all of our specifications. This is in a perfect world, that's what would be the readout for every alignment angle in this car. So looking at our camber uh, left and right and our cross camber just kind of a, a going in between both readings. Caster, left, right and cross. Toe, we have left, right and total. And then SAI. On the rear, looking at camber and toe. Don't have any caster reading displayed here uh, for the rear, which is normal. So once we get to this screen right here, we're going to go ahead and hit mount sensors. And it's going to, going to have us now take our four sensor heads, mount them up to the wheels. And you'll notice a little pictogram on here. They show which wheel this head goes onto. So if the person who used it before you uh, didn't hang these back up in the right location, this shows you that this one goes, that's the steering wheel there. So this is for the left front and we'll end up putting that in that spot. So when we had this alignment machine set up, we put a mark here for how high the lift needed to be in order for the sensors to line up with the cameras in the machine. So this yellow line right here, the bottom edge of our lift needs to be even with that. We're gonna go ahead and hit our uh, rise button and raise the car 
up to that point. So going up. So I raised it a little bit higher than that line. I listened for the clicks as the safety latches engaged when it got up to that line. And now I'm going to hit the lowering handle without touching my safety latch lever here. And that's just going to lower it down onto its safety catches. We're never going to go and work around a car that is not supported on the safety catches. So just lower it down here. And we are lined up at our lift points here and ready to install our heads. So these arms here, they just expand out. They're on a set of springs. We can expand them out, center it up onto the uh, tire here, and then push down on this gray handle right here, and that locks it into place. Anyone who's ever used any of the older alignment machines knows just how quick and easy uh, that is compared to mounting on the old type heads. So with all four heads mounted up, we're going to take out these pins and just jounce the suspension a little bit, getting it so that the suspension is kind of at that level spot where it'd be when the car is actually driving down the road. We're also going to remove the pins from the rear skid plates. And do the same thing on the other side. We're gonna take our wheel chocks and just go to the driver's side, rear wheel, and put one in the front, one in the back, because we are about to take off the e-brake, put this car into neutral, so that we can roll it backward and then forward to get our runout compensation. So we're gonna turn the key, not all the way to like key on engine off position, but just one click forward so that the steering wheel is free to turn. Put your foot on the brake, pull it down into neutral, make sure the e-brake is off. And now we are prepared to do our runout compensation. I'm going to take the rear wheel chalk here and move it backward. So I'm going to be watching the screen here and I'm going to push the vehicle backward until these arrows line up into the green. And then it's going to have me roll it forward and it's going to be taking in any compensation for any run out that's happening with the wheels and tires while it's rolling forward and backward. Back here and then just pause. It got its reading and now make sure not to grab onto any like the little plastic chintzy pieces. We'll roll this thing back forward. It'll hit that front wheel chalk and line back up. So now it's giving me a few of the angles. It's giving me camber angle and it's giving me toe angle. I gotta do one more step before I can get my caster angle and then I'd be able to adjust any of the alignment readings. So put our rear wheel chalk in just like so. To install our brake pedal depressor, push in good and hard on the brake pedal and then wedge the block there up against the seat. I'm also going to pop this back into park, pull up on the e-brake just for all that extra security. So I'm going to turn the wheels 20 degrees to the left, gets in the green, takes its reading, turn them back the other way, takes its reading, and then straight ahead. So now we have all of our alignment readings, but as far as actually getting the proper alignment to happen, right now my steering wheel is pointed off slightly to the right. So I don't want to align this thing 
to drive perfectly straight forward with the steering wheel off to the right, most customers are not gonna notice that their car has anything off with its alignment. The only time they notice anything is when the steering wheel isn't pointing straight forward when they're going straight down the road. So making sure to get our steering wheel holder pushed down on the seat in place. We're going to make sure our steering wheel is perfectly centered from the driver's perspective. So right now it's in its uh, vehicle virtual view. Um, I personally can't decide for this. All the extra pictures and things do not help. So I always click over to show uh, bar graphs and then I see what I need to adjust up front. I want to adjust the rear first, make sure that everything's correct with the rear, and then I can go through and adjust the front. One thing that also does fool people a lot of times with these machines is that they'll look at it and see that everything's in the green and go, okay, it's fine. If your customer came in there with an issue to do, uh, to do with alignments, being in the green isn't good enough. Right now, our toe-in angle is showing both rear wheels are pointing slightly over to the right. So we are going to have some tracking issues uh, going on with that. Um, I would want to get these things, if I already got it up on my machine anyway, let's get these things to be as close to dead center as is possible. And so we'll go through, we'll take in those, those readings, we'll get everything to be as close to perfect as we can, and then we'll move on to our front axle. And so here it's showing a little bit of a caster adjustments needed and our toe in, as we saw with the steering wheel pointing slightly to the right, when we centered it up, we had to turn it to the left and now both wheels are pointing slightly to the left. And so what we need to do is go in, we need to loosen up the lock nuts on our tie rods, spin the tie rods over until those two front wheels are pointing dead straight and then this will be taken up. For our caster adjustment, this one I'm gonna have to take a look at. And one nice thing about this machine is a lot of times it will actually tell you, ah, illustrate adjustments right here. So, manufacturer does not specify rear camber and toe adjustments. So, we might have to just deal with those rear adjustments. Hit next illustration. Manufacturer does not specify front camber and caster adjustments. So toe and go is basically all we're allowed on this vehicle. And then it does have a nice little diagram here. Here's the tie rod in the front of the car. We gotta loosen up this lock nut. And then this is actually kind of hard to see, but this is actually a hex key portion of our tie rod here. And so we can get onto that with a wrench and turn the tie rod and that'll increase or decrease the amount of threads showing right here, which will pull the wheels back into a straight ahead position with the steering wheel locked up. So I'm going to now loosen up the lock nut on our tie rod. We'll just get that lock nut backed off a little bit. I'm gonna watch the screen I'm going to take on this hexagon portion of our tie rod arm here and put my wrench onto it and just turn it until that adjustment comes right up in the center. wiggle it back and forth a little bit just to make sure it stays and with it centered up I'm going to tighten up my lock nut I'm then going to adjust the other side and come back here and readjust this side I'm going to go back and forth a couple of times because as I tighten the lock nut it usually moves my reading a little bit so I'll get both of them really really close and then do that final little adjustment Oh, that's pretty. 
Now, same thing over on the other side. A little too far. Get it close as we can. Tighten down our lock nut. And we will do one final little adjustment here. Get it perfect if needed. Sometimes we get lucky and it's just perfect the way it is. Oh, yep. That one's too close to play with. We're gonna leave it right there. That's it. This car is ready to get out of the bay. Thanks for watching another episode of Hot Rod High School. If your school doesn't offer an auto shop class or you're a homeschooler, we've got the thing for you. That's right, introducing our first ever. Auto shop in a box. Specifically designed for students between fifth and 12th grade. Our kits include the engine rebuild, the brake line flare, precision measurement, valve adjustment, and an award-winning curriculum. Click the link in the description below to learn more on our website and purchase your kit today, which will be shipped directly to your home. But don't worry, it's not coming in this thing. You can like and subscribe if you want to. It doesn't make a difference to me. But what does make a difference is you shifting your education into high gear with Hot Rod High School. Thanks for watching.